writing the introduction section in the scientific manuscripts uh, as we said before the introduction is written after completion of writing the methodology results and conclusion when you write a good introduction for your uh, articles it does mean that referees uh, editors and readers can know uh, what the study is about the topic or the domain of the study and the what motivated the author what motivated you to carry out the uh, study this should be evident or uh, appear in writing the introductions next uh, why the topic of the research is important why the topic of your research is important why did you the hypothesis deserve to to to, to be studied and also the introduction should present to readers uh, what is known about the research uh, the domain and then what is uh, is not known what is uh, is not known in knowledge uh, it is the gap of knowledge it is called the gap of knowledge that <coughs> your study addresses and it comes to fill this gap of knowledge your introductions should lead to your contents, should lead to uh, your idea, should uh, uh, present the hypothesis you want to uh, study and uh, you want to put the research uh, to the readers. And uh, actually, if readers don't enjoy your introductions, they probably they wouldn't uh, read your contents. And uh, the introduction should explain why you did the study. It's very important to answer the questions in the end of the introductions, why you implement this study. So how, how to write the introductions? To write uh, good introductions, you have to start with a very strong uh, sentence. To have a strong introduction, you need to start with a short and a strong sentence. And this sentence should relate it to the domain and uh, preferably related to the title of the uh, articles. And here is the example. Safely combining abdominoplasty with aggressive abdominoplasty, abdominal liposuction based on perforated vessels. When you see the sentence, the author started the introductions their contents to be controversial about performing liposuctions on an undermining abdominoplasty flap. This is a very good and very strong sentence to start the introduction. Another example here is a study about structural rhinoplasty of the long nose. So here the authors will talk about uh, the domain, the long nose. And uh, it seems the uh, technique is a structure rhinoplasty. So when the author starts the introduction, they wrote uh, the long nose, he started with the domain, he started with the topic. The long nose represents one of the most undesirable features in facial aesthetics. So here the, the author, number one, he started with a short strong sentence he put a long nose which is part of the title or the domain in the first sentence so it's a very good um, sentence and very strong sentence starts the uh, introduction here an example for a study titled outcome analysis of combined lipoabdominoplasty versus conventional abdominoplasty here the author will implement the study to um, to make analysis between the outcome of combined liboabdominoplasty and the abdominoplasty without liposuction. When you see the author started the introduction by this sentence, functional abdominoplasty was first described by Kelly in 1899 and popularized by, this is known knowledge, every Everyone knows this knowledge. They don't have to put this knowledge in the start of introduction. So this is questionable. Oh, this, is, this is not good 
uh, sentence to start the introduction. Here an example for a study titled Outcome Analysis of Combined Lipoabdominoplasty versus Conventional Abdominoplasty. Here the author will implement the study to, um, to make analysis between the outcome of combined lipoabdominoplasty and the abdominoplasty without liposuction. When you see the author started the introduction by this sentence, functional abdominoplasty was first described by Kelly in 1899 and popularized by this is known knowledge every everyone knows this knowledge they don't have to put this knowledge in the start of introduction so this is questionable oh, this, is, this is not good uh, sentence to start the introduction another example open rhinoplasty, influence of incisions, aero resections, and columnar strut on final appearance of the tip. So here, the authors will uh, evaluate different procedures of open rhinoplasty on the outcome. So here, see the first sentence in the, the introductions. The past century has seen the emergence and the rapid development of new surgical technique and since the 18 here the authors were review the history very historical knowledge and actually everybody knows this historical knowledge this is not a strong sentence to start with the introduction the uh, introduction how to write the introduction the, the, the introduction should be of um, uh, appropriate uh, lens the lens of introduction depends on the magnitude of the methodology if you have a, a, a very big methodology so actually you need um, uh, a big uh, introductions but uh, generally brief introductions uh, has become preferable. We write the introduction in the present simple tense. We write the introduction in the present simple tense. Okay. And we write the introductions uh, by our own words. Write your own words, the introductions. Don't copy and paste from other articles. And this is called plagiarism. And plagiarism is a very bad ethical a point in writing a scientific manuscript. So try to write on your own words. And the introduction is not a discussion. A discussion is a logical uh, argument and it is the justification of the um, your uh, uh, findings. But uh, the introduction is introduction. It, you introduce for your manuscript, you introduce for your uh, uh, research it is not a section of argument the introduction is actually is not a review of literature uh, 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 it is not a systematic uh, review it's not a review of literature so the introduction is an introduction uh, actually the introduction goes into three moves or three phases um, move one what establishing a research territory establishing a research territory is uh, move to establishing a nike St move three occupying the nike and presenting the present work what does it mean number one move one establishing a research territory choose that the general research area is important central interesting problematic or relevant in some way you have to write a paragraph introduce and review items of previous research in this area this is the research territory and then move to the second area establishing the nike the nike is the the gap of knowledge the gap in the previous research by raising questions raising a hypothesis about it and uh, extending the previous knowledge in some way Then we move to the uh, step three or move three, occupying this, this gap of knowledge. 
uh, you outlined the purpose or stating the nature of the present study and as we said uh, before we have to answer a very important questions why I'm going to do this research so and again you have in the introduction three paragraphs paragraph one define your research problem or research area paragraph two you have to define and discuss the gap of knowledge and then the final paragraph paragraph three outlines the purpose of conducting this research here we show um, an example uh, of how to write the introduction this paper about preorbital rejuvenation by plethroplast combined nanofat grafting here the author starts move one by establishing research traitors he said the preorbital region is a fundamental aspect in facial aesthetics very strong statement and it usually determines if a person looks healthy this area is a major concern among individuals of both sex and he uh, move into the preorbital regions include the upper eyelid and he defines the area of research in particular aging here the problem of the lower preorbital regions in terms of increased scalacity of the lower eyelid volume depletion and here the authors are stating the problem okay restoration of youthful appearance by only lower peripheroplasty is not enough here they define the problem he is going to address in the research in the presence of the surface irregularities and wrinkles affecting the remaining of the here in this uh, paragraph the authors uh, 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 define how the domain is important central interesting and there a problem uh, that only uh, peripheroplasty doesn't rejuvenate the, the very orbital area and here we need something else with the uh, lower peripheroplasty okay uh, establishing in like establishing the uh, where is the gap of knowledge is here the also stated that dermal fillers are a fast solution okay for volume restoration of the lower preorbital area like hyaluronic acids which almost gives factory but temporary results however hyaluronic acids cannot be used in conjunction this is a problem this is a gap of knowledge with the lower blepharoplasty in addition it is a temporary which usually lasts for few months and it needs to be repeated and hyaluronic acid depletion but doesn't rejuvenate the preorbital skin here here the authors stated the problem and the uh, the gap of knowledge nobody addresses what the problem of the preorbital regions in conjunction with the plethroplasty indicate a gap of previous research by raising questions and extending previous knowledge in, in some way okay the last paragraph the author occupying the night presenting their work he said Tonard and his colleagues are acknowledged for the first clinical trials of the introduction of nanofat grafting technique which addresses fine wrinkles and control irregularities nanofat grafting in particular solution is a practical solution when combined with lower prefer plus to reserve here the so, uh, the, the, the authors try to uh, combine the nanofat grafting with the lower peripheroplasty. This is the research. The, he he, he defines the, the research in this study. Nanofat grafting was used in complement with lower peripheroplasty to restore volume and rejuvenate the lower eyelid. Here, outline purpose and stating the nature of the present study. On writing the study, sometimes we 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 do some mistakes for example when you write several surgical procedures have been described when you say several surgical procedures you have to put several reference uh, more than one reference when you say several 
um, for example, oh, several surgical procedures have been described that require a multidisciplinary approach. Reference 15, 16, 17 between brackets. Abdominoplasty is the most recommended treatment for abdominal scale laxity. Okay, open brackets, reference 28, 29, 20, 30, 31. And when you, uh, uh, when you uh, reference for a technique, something historical, uh, uh, a pioneer, you have to mention the name of the author. You have to mention the, for example, Patrick Toner and his colleagues introduced nanofat grafting in to treat facial surgical. You put Patrick Toner not number because he's a pioneer. Another example, abdominoplasty as very described by Kelly in 1899. This man who is who, who is the one who introduced the abdominoplasty is a great man. You shouldn't write him as a number. You write you you have to mention his name in the introduction. Okay, a reference format. Reference format. You have to take care of the reference format, and it's very important to go to the uh, section of the uh, in the in the journal uh, of instruction for author, and you have to read it carefully and to know because some journal differ from others in the uh, writing the author. Uh, the, 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 the reference format, okay? But anyway, uh, uh, when we write a, 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 a valeur, a valeur in 1990 presented a similar paper num being between brackets number one, okay? Uh, you have to write the introduction in a chronological presentation, the, the old and then the recent and of course, we said before, right in the present tense. Thank you.